A Year of American Literature. Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson. Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson. Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson had many things in common. First of all, when Americans are asked to name their favorite poet, three poets often come to the top of the list. Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson are two out of the three. They were both writing in the second half of the 1800s. And although they were writing during the time of realists, in many ways, they were still romantics. Both of them focused on the individual and nature. Both of them rejected stiff, rule-bound traditional poetry and created new poetic forms. Let's first look at Walt Whitman. Walt Whitman believed in his own vision of poetry so much that he paid for the first copies to be printed of his book. Now remember that both of them rejected the rule-bound traditional poetry and created new poetic forms. Let's look at a traditional poem. In this case, The Village Blacksmith by Walt uh, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. The poem is broken up into equally sized stanzas. That's apparent at first looking before you even read. Then you notice that there's a regular rhyming pattern that's clear. Stands, hands, bands, tan, can, man, blow, slow, low. It also has a clear meter. In this case, every other syllable is stressed. His hair is crisp and black and long. His face is rough and tan. His brow is wet with on as sweat. He earns what air he can. Instead of poetry all bound up in all this structure, Walt Whitman used free verse. Free verse is that verse which is free from all those limitations, all that structure. Instead of this meter that we've just studied, Walt Whitman used something called cadence. Alone, far in the wilds and mountains I hunt, wandered, amazed at my own lightness and glee, in the late afternoon, choosing a safe spot to pass the night, kindling a fire and broiling the fresh killed game, falling asleep on the gathered leaves with my dog and gun by my side. There is sort of a rhythm to this. It's a rhythm somewhat like walking or like natural speech. He also used something called catalog. Now this is not the catalog where you order things, but it's a list. Walt Whitman will sometimes throw a list at his reader. The list of items creates an image in the reader's mind. Cries, curses, roars, plaudits, ambulance, workman, fall of grenades, Limbs, heads, stone, wood, iron. Walt Whitman and Emily Dickinson had many differences as well. Walt Whitman loved traveling, spent time wandering around the United States. Emily Dickinson lived almost entirely separated from humankind, spending much of her life inside one house. Walt Whitman was full of the joy of life. Emily Dickinson often wrote about death. Many feel that her poems showed that the isolation praised by romantics was taking a toll. His poems were sometimes huge, broad, sweeping things, often including lists called catalogs. Her poems were usually short and precise, carefully worded, carefully written. He wrote for a broad public, wanting many people to enjoy his poetry. Her poems were quite personal, written for herself or a few close friends. He paid for his own poems to be published so that many people could enjoy them. Few people saw any of her poems until after her death. She kept them very private. Now let's talk about Emily Dickinson a little. While Whitman experimented with form and structure, 
Dickinson experimented with word choice and punctuation. She used a strange diction, uh, sometimes using words with radically different meanings. She often punctuated her poems entirely with dashes instead of using the more expected periods, commas, and other punctuation marks. She also capitalized interior words, not just the words at the beginning of a line or proper nouns. Her reasons are not entirely clear. Look at this example. Nature and God both were be an expected capitalization, nature beginning line and God being a proper name. But what about both executors, my? Why is she doing this? Dickinson's poems are like lyrics, generally defined as short poems with a single speaker who expresses thought and feeling. Her poems speak with the word I and addresses the reader as you. Dickinson titled fewer than 10 of her almost 1800 poems. Her poems are now generally known by their first lines or by numbers assigned to them by editors after her death. Like most writers, Emily Dickinson wrote about what she knew and what intrigued her. A keen observer, she used images from a variety of sources to probe universal themes. She used images from nature, religion, law, music, commerce, medicine, fashion, domestic activities, and the themes that she explored were the wonders of nature, the identity of the self, death, immortality, love. Her poems often describe natural phenomena, but she describes the difficulties of perceiving the world around us. One of Dickinson's special gifts as a poet is her ability to describe abstract concept using concrete or real images. The meter or the rhythm of the poem is usually determined not just by the number of syllables in a line, but how the syllables are accented. Dickinson's verse is often associated with common meter, which is defined by alternating lines of eight and six syllables. Eight, six, eight, six. However, Dickinson experimented with a variety of meter and stanza forms. As with meter, Dickinson's employment of rhyme is experimental and often not exact. Rhyme that is not perfect is called slant rhyme or approximate rhyme. Slant rhyme, or no rhyme at all, is common in modern poetry, but it was less often used in poetry written by Dickinson's contemporaries. 